Hi, dear ones. Namaste. I bow to the love and enlighten you. It's been a while since I've uh, put out a YouTube video for the um, for my channel, and that's because I've been working pretty much nonstop to finish up my coaching program, which should launch within the next few weeks. I will be having a webinar at the end of March, and it'll be free, and I really hope you join me, and I'm going to be talking about what's involved with the coaching program, but I want to get right to what this video is all about. It, it is about attachment trauma and how it relates to being codependent and in some cases being involved with the narcissist and how it kind of like all comes together. Um, so a little bit about attachment trauma, the way I see it and the way I made it make sense in my head is that, you know, when, when a child is born, he and she or it, whatever you want to call this little beautiful baby divine, right? This, this divine baby is supposed is, is comes incarnates in utero with an, with an umbilical cord attached to mother. That cord is responsible for all the, the infants or the newborns or the fetuses nutrients. It is, it's for lack of a better, better way of explaining it, an extension cord to mother where the child is actually plugged into mother connected. There's a flow there. There's an energetic flow, right? From, from mother to baby, baby to mother, back and forth. It's beautiful and divine. I mean, it's an amazing design. I mean, really, it's incredible. So when a, 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 a baby gets born, that umbilical cord gets cut. That's very serious. And that alone is traumatic because now this child is no longer relying on this cord, let's say this extension cord, to make it feel grounded. So um, what is supposed to happen after a child gets born is a child is supposed to, and the bond, those moments right after a child is born are very, very important. In my case, my son was born with the cord wrapped around his neck. I had toxemia. I mean, I held him for, if, if I held him for a minute, it was a long time, and they took him away from me. And I couldn't see him until the next day because I had toxemia, preeclampsia, and they were so worried about me at the time with my blood pressure. I didn't see him until the next day, which is terrible. Um, so when we're talking about attachment, attachments, what we're talking about, attachment trauma, we have to first really, really appreciate the fact that you, that me, that every every single person that you see on the street, every person that's ever been, any person that will ever be, needs to feel connected or grounded to their mother. It's a fact. If you do the studies, if you, if, you, if you do the research, you will discover that, and I found this fascinating, that a mother's body has the ability to thermoregulate her newborn's body temperature. They've done study, studies with, with twins where, let's say, let's say if the breasts actually, I'm like this, the breasts, that's so funny. But anyway, the breast actually, one breast will, will actually heat up if, if the one twin needs their body temperature to, to raise, and the other, the other breast will actually cool if the, if, the other, if the other twin needs the body temperature to be cooled down. Let me see. Well, what I'm trying to say is that if, there's, if a newborn, is, if an infant a twin is born and their body temperature is too high, the mother's breast will cool. If and if you take the, if the the opposite twins, body temperature is too low, the mother's breast will actually heat up. Fabulous. So there's thermal regulation going on outside the field of consciousness. It's a divine connection. So we're going to talk about root instincts and primal primal needs and basic primal primal codes. It's sort of like when you open up a computer program or you get a video game, it comes coded, right? Or an app has codes. We as human beings have certain codes. And part of our coding is to experience this grounding experience in utero and to have that grounding experience continue after we're born. Now, when there's an attachment trauma, when there is a problem with mother, perhaps she, God forbid, dies right after we're born, or there is some type of a, a break in that, in that sacred, sacred time, like what happened to my son and I, um, or worse. Or if after this child is born, this mother is unable to connect to this child, we're talking about attachment trauma. So let's talk about adult children who come from abusive homes, who have been ignored by omission, who have been abused by omission, who have been abused by commission, who have been sexually abused, who are, whose mothers are alcoholics, who 
who cannot connect to their children, whose mothers are crack addicts, whose mothers are schizophrenic, whose mothers are severely codependent, married to an alcoholic, who is completely below the veil of consciousness, you know, completely stressed out and trying to micromanage the needs of the alcoholic. So many, uh, so many al uh, um, spouses of alcoholics are living in fear, fight or flight response, which mimics their childhoods. But what they don't realize is that as they're trying to ma micromanage the fear of the home by trying to keep the alcoholic calm, we've got children who are being ignored and they're not being able to connect to the mother. That's just a sad reality. That doesn't make the mom a baby killer. That doesn't make her an ex-murderer. That makes her unaware. That makes her out of the realm of consciousness. That makes her basically what she's doing is she's replaying her childhood and she's unaware at what's happening. So we have these root instincts, these, these, these needs that are coded into us. And being connected to our mother is absolutely one of them. So when we, when we are unable to create those bonds with our mothers, what ends up happening is we suffer a, an attachment trauma. So think about codependency. A codependent is fueled by this innate push, this innate need to bond, to bond, to bond, to attach. Codependents attach. They believe, they think they need this, this being outside of them. In most cases, the person that we as codependents who have been wounded due to attachment trauma will attract someone who is either just like our mother or just like our father or a combination of both. In most cases, it's a combination of both. And you would become the eagle's eye and you look at it from a higher perspective. You can see like, oh, you know, she's like my mother and she's like my father. Or, you know, uh, he's like my mother and he's like my father. And we know this because we feel childlike when we're trying to relate to these people. So there's this innate need that is outside your ability to control it. So the further below the veil of consciousness you are, or the, the harder it is, or the less time you take looking at the attachment trauma, the harder it, the harder it is for you to actually appropriately, appropriately deal with the attachment trauma and the, that facet of how codependency is showing up in your life. So the really interesting thing is that attachment trauma makes someone in the real time feel afraid of non-attachment. So it's, it gets really, really complicated in the mind. And that's why it really helps to talk it out with someone who is a professional, actually understands attachment trauma and codependency, and who's actually um, successfully navigated out of it. Talking to someone who actually knows what the hell you're going through is so important because they, they understand like the nooks and the crannies and, and the, the, the hidden hallways that a lot of people who haven't been through this don't understand. And so... When we're dealing, about, dealing with attachment trauma, the whole fear is the brain thinks it needs this connection. So now we're getting into another default setting, another code, pain versus pleasure. So we have one need, one innate need that is now acting upon another code. So we have one code that's acting on another code, one innate program, innate program. We're not talking about the subconscious programming that's of the world. So, you know, um, I think about that, those outside influences, like you think about Christ carrying a cross is, or we all said, so many of us have said like, this is the cross that I have to bear. So the subconscious programming or the childhood brainwashing is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your innate code, what you needed as a human being. And let's talk about why, you know, if you think about why, if you're a creator, why would you, why would you code a human being um, with this need to feel seen? Why would you code a human being with this need to attach? Well, if I'm creator, I want to secure my species. You know, I, I want to make sure that this human race has a really good chance of, of procreating and, you know, being able to enjoy the splendors of this beautiful planet that I've created. Think about what would happen if creator did not code within us this need to attach. Mothers would give birth and they would toss the kids off a cliff. They would let them go hungry. They wouldn't pick them up and naturally breastfeed them. I mean, our bodies, a mother's body is absolutely designed to take care of this, this human being. And so it's at, and all of us got here the same way. Hello, you know, <laughs> so all of us came here with the same needs and the same codes. That's just, that's what makes us 
all brothers and sisters. You know, we all have the same needs. So we have the one code to attach, and then we have now what's supposed to protect us as we move forward is the pain versus pleasure principle. So why would creator seed into us this, this pain versus pleasure principle? In my opinion, it was supposed to be a divine guidance system. That's it. So when I stepped out of my, let's say I'm a Neanderthal and I step out of my cave and I step on a sharp, a sharp rock, and I talk about this in the programming in one of the modules, then the pain that I associate with stepping on the rock will actually, will, will, will correlate with the pleasure of that never happening again. So, you know, I could be a Neanderthal, have a very small prefrontal lobe or a very, you know, very small brain or whatever, and not be very cognitive or not be very sophisticated, and I can understand this pain versus pleasure principle. And that is the grand design. So we have now, now, think about many, 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 many generations later. Remember, become the eye in the sky. You know, don't just see it as an Neanderthal and forget there's this whole, there's this whole timeline of, of human existence and this whole evolution and, and all these outside crosses or these outside influences, whether it be war or smallpox or, you know, alcoholism or whatever, you know, um, the trials and tribulations of trying to get from one part of the, the world to another and, you know, that the survival of that. So if you trace back civilizations to 2016 and you now add into it, you have cocaine, you have alcoholism, you have, you know, all sorts of, when I was a kid, it was quaaludes and, and mescaline. I think that was the name of the drug. LSD, you know, I'm dating myself. You know, today, I don't even know what the hell is out there today. You know, I never did drugs, to be honest with you. I was just too damn afraid of what might happen. You know, I was a first responder when I was a kid and I watched a girl overdose. And then she was just, she was my age and I had to pick her up, the, pick her up off the park grounds. And that was enough for me. That was not, not I ain't touching that stuff. Um, and so, but if you think about human species and, and then what's been introduced, now think about the different types of crosses that we've had to bear. Maybe our mothers had to, and our fathers had to bear the cross of racism or segregation and the separation that came from that in a, in a, in a community or even in a house, you know? Um, and now we're now, or back in the 1920s when there was a separation between the idea that women were not, you know, as valuable as men and didn't have the right to vote. Just keep going back. And you can see that each generation carried a different cross. So here we are, let's say 2016, advanced creatures, or we think we are. And now our life really isn't that much about trying to survive. You know, we, we pretty much have found ways to create homes and we have jobs. And now we're on, now we're with the type of human beings that want more. We want more spirituality. We want to get more out of life. So now our needs have met. So now we're associating pleasure with freedom, emotional freedom, with choices. Because thank God we're at a point, you know, in our history and a human evolution that we can Think about, you know, um, encouraging ourselves spiritually. It's beautiful. So now we're going to associate pain with not feeling free. Now, when we're talking about attachment trauma 2016, for those of us who are the adults of dysfunctional people who did not or were not able to bond with us, the issue at hand is we have one code for needing to bond, then the second code is pain versus pleasure. So we have to go back to the first code. I need to bond because our brains are going to, going to associate pain with not bonding and never receiving the attachment and pleasure with achieving the attachment. Fast forward to being an adult and we're out of our mother's home, out of our father's home, and now we're, we're sexual beings and we bump into somebody who we feel extremely attracted to. It is like the little black box in the bottom of the ocean going bing, bing, that's love, that's love. But what it is is that their vibration, that person's vibration, if you're not healed, is resonating with the aspect of you that's stored in your being on a vibrational level, like a branding iron, your cells have been branded with the vibrations that your brain associates with love to this human being. Now, the person who's showing up is probably going to be a lot like mom or dad. Remember, the brain associates mom and dad with your need to attach. So now there's going to be pleasure 
being motivated, like this, this internal drive to want to attach to, the, you might not even like this person. Cognitively, you could hear, who the hell does he think he is? You know, or cog cognitively, you can think like, who the hell does she think she is? You know, you could hear your, your brain, the 5% of you, not like this person, but you won't understand the 95% of, of this drive within you to want to attach to this person. That's why so often when I coach a client, they'll tell me, I didn't even like my husband the first, <laughs> first day I met him. Like, I knew he wasn't the right person for me, but I don't know. Like, I felt drawn to him because we're 95% unconscious and 95% of what we do, think and feel and, and, and say, is a result of what's in the subconscious mind and the result of these primal needs, pain versus pleasure, and in, in the need to attach that have gone rogue. Now, we have the ability as enlightened beings of 2016 and light workers, as so many of you are, and I know you are, we have the ability to ignite our pineal gland, turn it on like a flashlight and look below, like look inside the subconscious mind. We have the right to pull these ideas apart and look at them and dissect them and say, oh, that's why I feel that way. Oh, I, that's why I feel that way. And with these expanded viewpoints and understandings, you begin to learn how to master the programs. So the thing with the thing that gets sticky with attachment trauma is that, so let's say you're, you're married to an alcoholic or a, or a drug addict or a sex addict or whatever. You're just, you're, you're married to a problematic person, right? And you want to leave them. 5% of you says, I got to get out of here. But there's this 95% that says, I can't do it. So the 95% of you, until you wake up and you see what's happening below the surface, is attachment trauma. It's a consequence of attachment trauma. What's happening is you, you internally seek this attachment to this person because the plain pain versus pleasure principle is driving you to attach and at the same time, you're also associating pain with leaving the person. So you're in purgatory. It's like a pump. So, so many of my clients and so many of you who write me say, I want to go, but I'm afraid to go. Like I keep telling myself I want to go. That's the 5%. But 95% of you is, is want, wants to also bond with this person. And also at the same time is associating fear with leaving this person. So it's like this, it's a cat and mouse game. So for me, my life changed when I saw it, when I understood what was happening and I learned to bond with myself and I learned to, I started getting pissed off that I had like this crap going on inside of me that I wasn't able to control. I was like, what is going on? Who's, who's, who's pulling my strings? Like, I don't like that. And I was like, mm. I was determined to get like kick ass and like, no. No default setting is going to control me anymore. I want to think with my conscious, deliberate mind. I want to be, become a creator of my own reality. I want the life I want. I don't want the life, the default that's going to, that the default setting type life. I don't want the life my default setting is going to give me. Hell no. I will decide what I think. I will decide what I feel. I will decide who I want to spend my time with and, and live with and be a wife to or not be a wife to. I will decide that. And so that's what I'm hoping that you will gain from my upcoming coaching program. And that's what I hope that you will gain from these videos for, for, for any of you that is that are new to my work. And that's what I hope that you gain from, from my, my website and my books and all the information that I put out on the internet. And my meditations, I hope you feel liberated and freed. And I hope you learn how to master your mind and how to understand the default settings and how to override them. Dear one, this is your life and it could be anything that you want. I bow to the love and the light in you. Namaste. Bye.